Good afternoon, everyone. Guys, we have a situation in the United Kingdom where we have just masses and masses of violent crime on the streets. And absolutely nobody feels safe here anymore. You know, if you go into a big crowd, you're constantly on edge now, looking and looking around, thinking, right, is somebody going to be running around crazy with, a, you know, with one of these things that they, you know, stab people with? Now, what we've seen, the duality of the policing in the United Kingdom in the context that, you know, a lot of these protests and riots can be, you know, you can encapsulate these and say these and say that these were people angry about the state of knife crime on the streets in the United Kingdom. And I've not seen any politician or criminal justice person stand up and say, we're going to come down hard on all you people who carry knives. We are going to give you guys minimum sentences of 20 months. No, what we've seen is something really strange and quite paradoxically the opposite. We've seen, and again, you know, you've got to look at this, um, you know, as a, as a wider picture and you've got to look at the root causes of this. What we've actually seen is people who are, highlighting this issue and annoyed about this issue these are the people who are getting you know penalized for it you know it's kind of like you've got a sinking ship and if you point to the leak coming in the sinking ship you get thrown overboard because you're your highlight you're saying there's a sinking ship so everybody's like trying not to look trying to say the ship's sinking but not to point at where the water's coming in now Yesterday was absolutely wild. We had the incident in Leicester Square where there was a, an 11 year old girl, and as I believe her mum, uh, who was 34. And then also in Manchester, we had an incident where a man was uh, rushed to the hospital because of the you know knife crime. Now, today it's come out that the attack in where was it? The attack in Nottingham last year. In fact, let me share the article with you guys. So there was an attack last year in, where are we guys? In Nottingham. So the, the attack last year in Nottingham. Nottingham families say the police have blood on their hands. So let me scroll down to what they're saying really. So the article, and like most things guys, the, the important stuff's usually at the bottom. Here we are guys. So, so this guy, um, right, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, I'm looking for the keyword here. Right, here we are. So it's also found poor planning and endangerment with the, per, with the gentleman and his family who raised concerns about his mental state with the trust and told the BBC in their first, first panorama interview. So this guy's family who did this attack his, you know, his family have told the Mental Health Trust and warned them about his mental state from this article. You know, it's clear that there are four admis admissions in two years and repeated disengagement and refusal to take medicine require a much more robust package of health, the report said. Now, what are people supposed to do? You know, what, what, what's the, what can the NHS do if someone's refusing, you know, if someone's refusing treatment? More assertive engagement and restrictive measures were crucial to managing his illness and the risk he posed to others when unwell. So what you've got there basically is the, you know, the, the NHS, the mental health services and the police, I believe, you know, all saying that the problem was identified but they're all saying they couldn't do anything. And it's okay to point the fingers and say, yo, you should have done something. What could they have done? The guy hasn't committed a crime. You know, everybody's saying this guy's gonna commit a crime, this guy's gonna commit a crime. But until he actually crosses that threshold, he hasn't done anything wrong. So what can we do? What are the active measures to put in place? Because, you know, I, I genuinely don't know. And that's a terrifying situation at the moment. I watched a video the other day about, um, what was it? There was, you, you'll know that you'll know the video if, I, I won't be able to put it on here. But there was a video and there's a guy, uh, there's a bunch of gentlemen and they're in a taxi. And then they ask the taxi driver to wait for them. And then one guy runs back and he's calling him uncle and then he drives off. And as he's driving, the windows are getting smashed and they're trying to, 
get in and, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to um, pro- stab you, I guess. You know, and, they saw the, and, the, and this kid in the middle, because he is a kid, he looks terrified. You know, he's scared. He's, you know, he, he's, he's a scared boy. And then it comes out that he's, you know, he's this big gangster and, you know, he puts all this stuff on, on his Instagram post. And that's kind of the problem with society. We just have no morality anymore. It's just absolutely gone. Because criminals now, they play the legal justice system, and then you have, excuse me, you have barristers, you have legal experts, everybody, once they get that person, you know, on the defence, they're getting money for that. So as long as this person is, you know, willing to go along with the sham, with a sham, with a scam, you know, they're going to keep getting that money in the context that if I'm a barrister, legal aid's be more or less finished now unless you're you know unless this has gone to crown court as i understand it now if i get a criminal and he's willing to just you know let me play along with him me as a barrister i can i'm getting paid now i'm getting paid to try and you know minimize the risk to this gentleman so you see where we're going now we're actually paying people to get people off on these crimes and of course you know there shouldn't be any, you know, if people are, if people are criminals, you know, of, of course they shouldn't, they should go to go to prison. And equally, if they're not guilty, they shouldn't go to prison. But the reality is, you know, we are doing, you know, the 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 the, the what is it, the burden of evidence now is within the, you know, within the accuser or something. But it's got to a stage now where we are spending an absolute fortune of our own money. On defence lawyers, for people like this, you know, these people who, you know, who commit these sort of crimes, it's absolutely insane at the moment, guys, all right? And I really don't see any way, you know, any way out of this, because the politicians in the United Kingdom, not one of them seems to want to come down heavy on, you know, the, the root cause of this. Which is pe- which is crime, and then you can go that push that further, and the you know the lack of respect for the law, and it seems like the legal you know the law abiding citizens, those people who get up and go to work nine till five, pay their taxes, want to go on holiday once a year, those are the people who are paying because taxes are going up and the price of everything is going up, and then when there's incidents and people go out to protest. Those are the people who get locked up instead of dealing with the root cause. It's absolutely insane. There's something else. I've, yeah, and I want to share this with you as well, guys. Hang on. What, um, so what Keir Starmer said. So let's keep that in mind and then think about what Keir Starmer said. So this is uh, Keir Starmer's uh, PM says communities will be in will be safe in face of riots. This is quite. This is from the sixth of August. So just scrolling down again. So immigration lawyers have told the BBC they fear being attacked after their workplaces were put on a list of officers circulated on social media. So I do think that is going to be the next phase. And, you know, and Keir Starmer right now, he thinks he's, you know, he thinks he's controlled this situation. But the reality is those feelings are still out there. And, as you know, and while we're watching the media and watching things unfold in front of us, that small group of that small group of people, they're getting angrier and angrier. And, you know, these lists are already out there, readily available. And as it says here, you know, the uh, immigration lawyers have told the BBC that they're worried that they're going to be targeted. And guys, you know, I feel at some point, unfortunately, that will be what happens. They said they have been advised by police to work from home, board up offices and windows and install fireproof letterboxes. So this is in response to this, um, you know, when the, um, you know, when this list was produced and there was supposed to be like 100, 100 protests. After Tuesday evening's Cobra meeting, attended by ministers and members of law enforcement, Keir Starmer repeated his message that those taking part in unrest would feel the full force of the law. Guys, what about Keir Starmer coming out and saying those involved in knife crime will feel the full force of the law? How about that? Just a thought, you know, how about he comes out hard on these people who are going around in lawless Britain instead of those people who are complaining about lawless Britain? Yeah, so that so he goes on and he talks about um, about 100 people have now been charged in relation to the disorder. 
with more suspect rioters appearing in court Tuesday. And Sir Keir Starmer said he expected substan uh, substantial sentencing by the end of the week. That should send a very powerful message to anyone involved, either directly or in line, that you are likely to be dealt with within a week. Why can't we deal with knife crime within a week? Why can't we stop these young men who are going around with the machetes, with the knives? Why can't we deal with them in less than a week? Why can't we come down hard on them? I genuinely don't know, guys, all right? But it just seems like we're living in an Orwellian, you know, in an Orwellian book. Now, also what I want to question is this here, you know, feel the full force of the law. Now, Keir Starmer, his background is, you know, in, you know, prosecution. And he's saying people will feel the full force of the law. I, I don't understand the concept. I really don't, because you either are dealt with by the law or you're not. You, you, you know, you don't go in and say, right, only give him half of the law. It's kind of like being pregnant, you know. You you, you don't say to your boyfriend or get, well, boyfriend, well, who knows what it is today. You don't say to your boyfriend, hey, you know, I'm uh, I'm half pregnant. You're either pregnant or you're not. You either feel the force of the law or you don't. You know, you can't really have in between. So I don't know what this rhetoric is. Guys, absolutely insane. I don't know where this is going. But, you know, I do know one thing. It's not going to get any better until we deal with the root cause. And Keir Starmer is in total denial about the root cause. Anyway, guys, that is it. I'm going to max the grid. Let me know what you think in the comments.